Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Rob Adams. I am the Chief Strategy Officer here at IOG, and I'm here today to tell you a little bit more about a project that Charles talked about in his keynote yesterday called Midnight. Um, I'm also lucky enough to have been the, or to still be, the general manager um, for this project for, and I have been for the last year or so. Honestly, this is one of the most exciting projects I've ever worked on. I may not look like it, but I'm extremely excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is because I believe that this project will, has a unique ability to bridge the gap between Web 2 and Web 3, the traditional IT world and the new IT world. Um, so why do I say that? So Web 2 brought us a really interesting and new set of capabilities that we never had before. We were able to collaborate, interact, and transact with people and institutions that we were not able to, in ways we were not able to before. The downside of doing that, though, was we had to give up our personal information to be able to do that. In many ways, we had to basically turn over um, everything about us to some entity, some place, in order to be able to operate. The downside of that is, obviously, people were collecting our data and selling it to other people. People were losing our data through security breaches, other things. Um, you're only masked by an address or something like that, but it's not too hard to be able to, in many cases, be able to track you back to who you actually are. Or we have complete anonymity solutions where everything is completely dark and nobody can know anything about you, and I don't know anything about anybody else. So I'm not able to have confidence that I'm transacting business and or collaborating with people who I know or people who I trust, right? This is where Midnight comes in. So what's Midnight? Midnight is a confidentiality first blockchain that allows developers, gives them the power to create dApps that allow users to protect their own information, to keep their information on their own systems, don't have to share it. All they do is share assertions about their personal data. Those assertions are based, can be based on things like KYC information and others so that the person on the other side of the transaction can have confidence that those assertions are correct. Right. It also leverages Cardano, as Dom said in the last talk. Um, it's a side chain of Cardano. So it leverages things like the security and robustness of Cardano and the decentralization of Cardano. But it extends that trustless ecosystem by using zero-knowledge uh, cryptography and comp confidential computation to be able to ensure that uh, users' personal data is protected because they own it. OK. So. What does this mean for developers? And developers are um, our real primary concern for the first phase of Midnight. What it means is that developers can easily write dApps that don't require their users to share personal information. Um, it doesn't mean that they, they might not for some regulatory purposes, but it means that it's possible. It allows people to maintain autonomy over their own data so they own it and have sovereignty over it. And it allows people to connect, collaborate, and transact in a way that is confidential. Now, of course, it's uh, sustainable because it's built for developers. Um, there are a lot of interesting development tools, uh, developer tools that come with it. And it depends on um, Cardano and gets a lot of goodness that you come to expect from Cardano. All right. So as Charles mentioned yesterday in um, his keynote speech, there's a basic philosophy to Midnight. We believe that these three freedoms are really essential to having a vibrant blockchain-enabled world. One is freedom of association. So you can collaborate with people based on rules that, they, that are set by the community itself. So an example of this might be, say I want to create a DAO that is focused entirely on local politics in my city. I can create a smart contract that says only people who are of voting age in my jurisdiction can participate because I don't want outside interference and I don't want people who are unable to vote in my jurisdiction to be able to participate. I want people who are going to be active to participate. Without exposing my personal information, I can 
put on the chain a series of proofs about my personal information that will allow me to participate in this DAO. So they don't know who I am, essentially, but they do know that I am able to contribute. Another is freedom of commerce, exchanging value in a confidential way that is regulatory friendly. Now, let me, let me talk about regulatory friendly because there was some interesting chatter on Twitter, I hear. Um, I don't do Twitter, but I did hear about it. Um, somebody said something about a back door. There's no back doors in Midnight, right? Um, I'm not even sure where that assertion would come from. Um, there's nothing in the chain that says that there is uh, the ability to, for some random person to just get in and understand everything that's happening. But a DAP developer can say in their terms of service, I'm in a regulated industry, I'm going to need to be able to respond to subpoenas or something like that. Do you agree to use my DAP in order to use my service? And what that will allow the DAP developer to do is, because you agreed to this, allow them to create viewing keys that will show your transactions, if necessary, to a regulatory authority. Now, what this does, and the, the thing that's really important about this is it allows people on a blockchain to actually integrate with the wide world of services that are out there today. And it helps pull them toward a Web3 world. Without this, when are you going to be able to work with a bank that has to respond to regulatory pressures? When will you be able to work with an institution that um, is even in supply chain, for example, or an enterprise application where there, there is strict regulatory authority over the actions in that network. Without that, and without the freedom to have regulatory friendly transactions on the chain, <coughs> you won't be able to actually pull the rest of the world toward Web3. And the last one is freedom of expression. Now, there's some interesting portions about this. You can candidly and openly share content. Now, some of the use cases that we've posited for this one are, you could throw some, some darts at them, but let's take the case of a whistleblower. Somebody who found something nefarious happening at a company that they work for, they will be able to publish information through their lawyer without having the, the fear of having retribution, right? That's a positive use case for this. A positive use case for this is a journalist who wants to publish something in a country that may not be friendly to press freedom, right? So there are other ways that you could use this, but there are a lot of things that are really necessary to allow people to express the information in an open manner without fear of that censorship, so it can't be changed, chained, changed, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it also uh, may shield you from retribution. Okay. So there are a lot of advantages to Midnight. You can selectively disclose your information if you choose to. Um, if you don't choose to, you can have complete confidentiality. It's easy to develop. Our first libraries are in TypeScript. So TypeScript would be, uh, you know, it's a very popular programming language. You'll be able to create smart contracts um, and applications with TypeScript. Um, there's also a lot of developer tools that come with us, the pretty interesting developer tools. Um, it's secure, it inherits uh, the security, et cetera, from uh, Cardano, as I've already said. And of course, it's regulatory friendly because of the ability to create viewing keys. They are not backdoors. And they're all, they're also have, Midnight also has KYC friendly um, on ramps as well. Okay. There's some other interesting characteristics about Midnight 2 that I'll talk about. I've already talked about TypeScript. This one I'll talk a little bit more about in the next slide, where we separate public and private state. And that's really key to the confidentiality underpinnings of Midnight. Um, we have a custom compiler that allows you to create custom uh, circuits. Um, we, have a we have native support for ZK smart contracts built into the programming framework. Um, we're going to have very low costs for transactions, and they will be predictable up front, so you don't have to actually transact something to know how much it's going to cost you to do it. Um, we also have predictable outcomes. This is one of the things that some chains struggle with. Um, if I rehearse a contract um, based on some public data, 
I can be guaranteed that if that public data changed, the contract can't execute. If the public data has not changed, then the contract can go ahead. So you can be assured that if you rehearse contracts up front, that you'll get what you expect. We also have composable privacy. This is an inter interesting concept in that I can write a smart contract that um, has some personal data, or not personal data, but has some confidential assertions inside of it about your personal data. And I can write another contract that depends on the previous one without sharing that uh, confidential state. So I can actually compose ways of um, having contracts that do not need to share secrets between them. And also we have atomic uh, uh, transfers for confidential coins inside of Midnight. Okay. Now here's the interesting part about this. Now where the goodness of Midnight really comes in is this private computation on top. Your secrets never leave your system. Right? You own them. We protect them by never taking them, unless you choose to share them yourself, right? But it's all up to you. But we never take your secrets off the chain, off of your personal system. Sorry, off your personal system. The only thing that goes onto the chain is assertions about your private data, not your private data. So the assertions go on the chain, the fact of your private data does not. And what that allows us to do is we can operate on that, on that public state on the chain with um, uh, ZK contracts. And we have a whole library of data structures for public contracts and execution of public contracts. And all of that sits on top of a Z-swap ledger. So in the Z-swap ledger, it gives us an interesting set of characteristics, which includes the, be the ability to create, um, uh, reveal transactions through uh, viewing keys. Um, it also gives us the KYC on-ramps that we would like to see, but it also lets us do multi-asset as well. So there's some, some really interesting assets here for developers. So that's basically all I've got for Midnight today. One of the things that I would like you to do if you're interested in this, please go to midnight.iohk.io midnight to sign up for more information. We promise we won't spam you. Um, but you'll get to learn about it as we develop more of this. Um, we're having a developer workshop tomorrow. Uh, we'll publish the results of that. We're, we have some leading lights in the industry who are coming to play with it and see what the program model looks like and give us some feedback on it so we can make it as, uh, as good as it can get um, for the developers out there. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate it.